It has been a while, but it's time for another Football Manager 23 series, and this time we're going Greek in Roads to Glory. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome to another Football Manager 23 save. This time we are in Greece as we take over GS Diagoras Rodou in the Greek second tier and we hope to create history just as 5th century BC boxer Diagoras did in becoming a legend who ended up having an international airport and this football club named after him. Let's go and take a look at them, shall we? Founded in 1905, dissolved by the Italian fascists in 1929 and revived in 1945, the Agoras are one of the oldest teams in Greece, but they've never really found success at the top level of Greek football. They played in the top flight between 1986 and 1989 with a famous victory over Panathinaikos and they reached the Greek Cup semi-final in 1987, but that is as far as their success goes. I'm going to try and change that and I'm going to try and create history with Diagoras and bring success to Rhodes Island. Chairman Michaelis Stafopoulos has welcomed me to the club. As you can see, finances are insecure and we've got a transfer budget of zero, but we'll look at all of that in a minute. Our fierce rivals are Rhodos, who play in the level below us but share a ground and are hoping to try and get success before we do. Stadium is currently a 3,700 capacity stadium. But we'll have a look at the stadium at another point. The basic training facility is below average youth and basic youth recruitment means that this is going to be quite a tough job. But let's go and look at the players I've got at my disposal. We currently have 16 first team players at the club and we're going to start with the goalkeepers. Our first one is Alexandros Afanasopoulos, 25 years old, current ability of two and a half stars, potential ability of three stars. Looks to be a decent enough goalkeeper, but... He's only rated as our third best. Giannis Galanis is our second best rated goalkeeper, 23 years old. Potential ability of four stars. Another sweeper keeper. Got some decent attributes. And could be a decent goalkeeper in the years to come. But according to my star ratings, my number one goalkeeper is Giannis Bintzes. 23 years old. Current ability of three stars or four star potential as well. Another sweeper keeper who can play as a normal goalkeeper. Has aerial reach of 14, handling of 14, reflexes of 14, determination of 17, good jumping reach, decent agility, decent kicking ability as well. So he's the person who is going to be starting as my number one if I go by star rating. But we're going to have a proper look at the team, set up a tactic, etc. as we go along. But now let's move on to the defenders. And we've got... Seraphim Maniotis, 22-year-old, defensive midfielder and centre-back, who plays as a central defender as a stopper. Can play as a no-nonsense centre-back and a ball-playing defender as well. He's considered our best defender. First touch of 12, marking of 12, passing of 12. He's aggressive, decent concentration, decision-making. His positioning's good and he has very good stamina. He's got potential ability of four and a half stars, so he could be a very important player for us. Fantasies Papionu. Can't really pronounce that one, but we'll go with that. Another one who's got potential ability of three and a half stars, possibly going up to four and a half stars. Plays as a right fullback. Back can play as a wing back or as a defensive midfielder. He's got decent crossing ability, decent tackling, decent positioning, decision making. He's got some good physical attributes as well. Obviously could do better but at the level we're at at the Greek second tier he's probably going to be quite a decent player Julgios Magakis another one current ability of three star four star potential plays as a right fullback or can play as a left fullback and as a wing back as well another one with decent crossing ability marking tackling le good leadership is considered our best fullback on the right hand side and on the left-hand side. So he's probably going to be quite a key part of my team. Demetrius Tatsis, a left-back and a left-wing-back, who now, if we look at the star rating, says that he's the best on the left. It just said Georges Makakis was. But we'll go with Tatsis. <laughs> Three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential, 22 years old. And that is the end of our defenders. We've got another couple of greyed out players, but I'm not going to bother looking at the greyed out ones because they're not actually real. And we'll try and bring in other players to take their places anyway. We move on to the midfielders. We've got Juan Manuel Arias, 23 years old, Argentinian, 
three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential, very good attributes. He's got quite a lot in the blue in the blue there. Plays as a Mazala on attack, a central midfielder on attack, can play as an advanced playmaker, is considered the best midfielder at the club, if we look at the star rating and the squad comparison there. And yeah, he's come from Ayanapa, where he made 27 appearances and scored one goal. And he could be a very good and a very important player for us. Giannis Parastatidis is next, 21-year-old. Mazala plays as an advanced playmaker on in the attacking midfield positions as well. Not very flexible. He's 21 years old. It might be worth trying to train him in some other areas. Decent technique, decent vision and work rate. He's got a bit of flair about him and his physical attributes are quite good. He's got potential ability of four star, but there's a possibility of it going up to five. So he could be one for the future, really. Looking at it, we've got a lot of young players in this team. So obviously have a look down and see if we've got a bit more experience to go with it. But it might be worth trying to bring in a couple more experienced players just to try and lead the youngsters. Georgios Vorgontzis, another Greek player, 22 years old, two and a half star current, four star potential. Plays as a winger on both sides. Decent crossing, finishing, first touch, and some decent physical attributes. But two and a half star current ability, he might not even be good enough for this level. But we'll wait and see. Viktor Lukic, Serbian, 21 year old. He looks like our star player. He looks like our star player. Four and a half star current, five star potential. Four and a half star reverted winger on the right hand side. Can play in the centre of the attacking midfield or on the left. Um, 13 first touch, dribbling of 13, finishing 11, crossing in corners of 11, can shoot from, from distance, has got good passing, good technique, good physicals, good mentals, and he will be the number one name on my team sheet by the looks of it. I've obviously got to look at the rules and stuff for this division because I've seen the foreign sign on a couple of players. I'm not quite sure how many foreign players we're allowed and stuff, but we'll keep an eye on squad selection rules and stuff as we go along. Vasilis Siantoulas, he's Available for loan, but he's a two-star current. Looks like one for the future. He's 20 years old. Can play anywhere along that attacking wing or attacking midfield positions. He's not quite good enough for the first team by the looks of it. But he's got very good natural fitness. He's got a bit of pace, a bit of acceleration, a bit of agility. Decent first touch and decent work rate. So could be someone that can play a part as a backup. Mubarak Adashina, Nigerian. Another one who is on that foreign thing. So we like, like I said, we've got to keep an eye on that. Potential ability of four and a half stars. Another winger, attacking midfielder. Some decent attributes there. But he might again not be good enough. Bogdan Stemankovic, another Serbian, 24 years old. So a little bit older than the players we've been looking at. Plays an inverted winger on the left or is a natural advance forward, deep lying forward, pressing forward. And again, so the second Serbian is going to be our second star player. Good Super League 2 player, could improve a lot. Four and a half star current, four and a half star potential. First touch of 16, everything else is pretty much blue. And he looks like, along with Viktor Lukic, he's going to be one of the first names on my team sheet. Yanis Lahou, Lahiel, Lahiel, can't pronounce that one either, but he's a 27-year-old French player, 27. He's ancient compared to the rest of this squad. Four and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. So he might be a little bit older, but he's also going to be one of the first names on my team sheet. Although I've just noticed that he plays in the same positions as the last one we looked at. So it looks like we've got some decent ability in the same areas. Um, we'll have a look at team depth and stuff as we go, but... It looks like we've got some really good potential, really good quality in the same positions. And the last player is Michaelis Manius, 32 years old. He is definitely ancient compared to the rest of the team. He's our main goal scorer or goal threat by the looks of it. He's the only player who plays just up front. He, according to this, he's our main striker. Four and a half star current, four and a half star potential. Finishing a 13, first touch of 12, heading of 11, long shots of 12, plays as a poacher. And he's new at the club by the looks of it. 
Hasn't got the greatest goal scoring record though, really. 333 appearances, 97 goals for 15 different clubs. But he is that person who brings a little bit of experience to the club and according to his star rating, he's our best striker. And we do have an under-19s team, which has quite a lot of potential in it. So obviously not for the first season, but as we look to move on in season two, maybe season three, players like Demetrius Kaftiranis, Kostas Monopolis and Demetrius Vassos will be players that are going to be on my radar, all 15 years old at the minute. In the next couple of seasons, I can see them coming through to the first team because they all have potential five-star potential ability. Right, a quick look at our squad plan and we'll show how much depth we have in this side. And for goalkeepers, yeah, there's not much ability really. We've got three goalkeepers, but none of them are really that great. Right back, two and a half stars. Georgian Pagakis is top with Fantasis Papayonu, who can play there as well. Left back is Dimitris Tatsis and Magakis is back up. In the centre of defence, we've got one defender, Seraphine Maniotis. So we need we need some strengthening there, really. Again, Maniotis is our best defensive midfielder, and Papionu can play there as well. I've set him up in a 4-3-3 like with a defensive midfielder at the minute. I may have to change depending on players that I can bring in and stuff. I was going to try and play quite narrow, but as you'll see in a minute, I've got better wingers than what I have attacking midfielders in the centre. Juan Manuel Arias is the best midfielder. And Giannis Parastatidis can play there as well. Um, there's not much depth. There's not much depth. So I may be bringing a few of those under-19 players into the first-team squad quite early. Victor Lukic is our best player on the right wing. And Bogdan Stemenkovic, Stemenkovic is our best on the left. And then Manius up front. Um, yeah, the reason I've gone for this is because of Lukic and Stemenkovic, who are much better than anybody else, really. Giannis Lahiel, um, the striker who can play, and the attacking front left can play there as well. Um, so it might be a case of possibly moving Stemenkovic into the middle and putting Lahiel out wide, just to try and get my best players in the team to start with. But it's only the 1st of August. And we have until the end of September before the league season gets underway. So we've got plenty of time to try and strengthen the squad, try and bring in a few new players and play some friendlies and see where we're at. Obviously, the finances come into it when we're looking at for new players and to strengthen the squad. And our financial status is insecure. Our bank balance is minus 83,540. We have a transfer budget of zero and we're currently spending over £9,000 a week on wages, with our wage budget is 8313 So, um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a very, very tough start to the save, but I'm confident that I can do what I want to do here. The um, club vision is just that we avoid relegation. So, we've got to avoid relegation, be competitive in the Greek Cup, so basically just show up. Don't get beat 12 nil. Work within the wage budget, so I've got to sort that problem out straight away. And we've got to work towards repairing the club's financial damage. Something I've never really understood on this game, and something I will never understand, is why the manager's responsible for repairing the club's financial damage, especially when I'm a new manager, and I've got nothing to do with it happening in the first place. Our supporters, we have a 10% hardcore, 33% core, 18% family, 17% 7 fair weather, 22% casual and no corporate fans. All they want us to do is get the better of, better of our rivals if we ever play them and avoid relegation. So basically, the aim is avoid relegation and look to build for next season. We're not going to try and do anything amazing this season. All we're going to do is try and look to the future. Supporters' influence on the board is high. There's 21.4 thousand social media followers and 174 season ticket holders. So we've got decent support. We've got not a bad vision, not a bad squad. So there's something to work with at the start of this save. So we're not we're not going in completely ruined. We're not we at least we've got some players and we've got some fans. I ain't got any money, but that can come later.
I said we'd take a quick look at the ground. Diagora Stadium is where we'll be playing our home games. The Municipal Stadium of Rhodes. Its original name was Arena del Sol. It was an Italian-built stadium. It's a football and cycling stadium. It's got a cycle track all the way around. There are some decent pictures on a site called Pitched.tv um, who do stadium tours and reviews and stuff. As you can see, it's a little bit run down. It's a little bit of a run down stadium. I presume it used to be bright yellow. It's quite faded now. There you see cracked, cracked concrete and dusty seats and a bit of a... It's a bit run down, isn't it? But again, the club's got no money. They're not going to be spending anything on getting the stadium up to, up to scratch. As you can see there, there's the cycle track around the outside of the football pitch. And yeah, it's it's a stadium, isn't it? It's a bit run down and it's a bit rubbish. But we're playing in the second tier of Greek football. What do we expect? It's got not going to be Old Trafford or St. James's Park or anywhere like that, is it? So it's a football stadium. It has dugouts and it has a pitch and it has places for fans to come. So hopefully we can give those fans something to cheer about. We have a quick look on Google Maps. There is the entrance to the stadium with the big clock on the top. It, quite a nice nice entrance, I suppose. As you can see, though, it is quite run down. The paintwork's all stripping off. There's some trees and stuff around it. There's a restaurant there, though, look, right next to it. The Rock Style Cafe. Restaurant right there. Look, play football there. Go for your dinner over there. Great, isn't it? Um, it's roads as well, so the temperature's going to be nice. The beach ain't going to be that far away. Take a little walk around the stadium here. There's a cinema, so we can go and watch films as well if the football's no good. Can't can't see inside the stadium. You can just have a little walk around it where the entrances are and the turnstiles and what have you. But yeah, it's quite a rundown, dilapidated stadium. But hopefully we can bring success, like I said before. And get some money, rebuild the stadium, or do it up a little bit. At least give it a lick of paint. But anyway, that is the stadium that we're going to be playing at. It's a little bit of a walk around outside. We saw there's a cinema and a restaurant where we can go. And I might do a little bit more on Google Maps in future episodes. We'll take a walk down the beach or whatever. See how far away it is from the beach. But anyway, that is the first episode of Roads to Glory that we have met the team, you've seen the stadium. And now I'm going to go and see if I can bring in some new players. We're going to play through the pre-season, see what we've got, see where we're at, try and get the players playing in some kind of decent tactical setup. And I'll see you again next time. That brings episode one of Roads to Glory to an end. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to know when future videos are going to be released. Comment below to say hi. Tell me if you enjoyed the video or not. And I'll hopefully see you all again next time. Until then, bye-bye for now.